Uh, hey. Murphy here. You must be here for the, uh... Okay, look. Frankie sent me this letter, and he asked me to read it when you showed up. I had no idea what he was talking about, but here it goes. So we were at the abandoned temple, recently cleared of vampires, by the gorgeous, the glorious, the absolute hottie, Master Speck. He is just the prettiest man at all- hang on. This goes on for a bit- I'm- I'm gonna skip this part. Blah blah blah, dating him in my mind, writing fanfiction about us, hover over my fa- Okay, here we go. So a vampire charmed Ido, and we had to rescue him, and Flimvar burned him to a crisp. Then I had another dream about a bluebird and some burning books, and then we got to Ixingnir and met Janderson's mom. And now I'm in a house that once belonged to the great Gazdark the Inventor, and the current owner just accused me of killing their dad. Wait, there's no resolution to that. He's currently up- When did he write this? Okay, that's all it says. Now kindly buy something or get out of my store. everybody and welcome to the terrible adventures of the janice and Bruford's parchment company episode 19 when you're really you're really getting there everybody <laughs> my name is penny d i will be your dungeon manager and my favorite outdoor place to go is the beach big fan of the beach i grew up in tauranga which is like a beach well i mean it's like next to a beach town love going about Monganui beach love like getting getting you know thrown around in the waves it's pretty it's pretty popular now so it's usually pretty full on the good days but like i like going to a surf beach and not surfing <laughs> hi i am poppy i play ida for the tiefling rogue and oh i've got too many favorite places but one of the very top ones would probably be Kaiwi Lakes, uh, which is up near Whangarei in New Zealand, because it is absolutely gorgeous. Spent a lot of my time as a child there, camping and stuff. And um, because I have eczema, fresh water is a lot nicer than seawater. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, hi, I'm Liz, and I play Karen, your favorite dwarf barbarian. My favourite place that is outside, um, I grew up in Albany on the North Shore and not many people know but there is a waterfall in Albany mm. and there's a whole um, track that goes up the hill behind the waterfall and I used to go there all the time as a kid, we would walk our dogs there and I've got many many good memories of the Albany waterfall. Oh that sounds so nice. Oh, there. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I play everyone's favourite nervous human. Artificer, you know, my two favorite places, uh, Kringahaki Gorge and Waihi Beach, um, because that's where I got engaged. So, Aww. Yeah, yeah, I like that place. We're place buddies. Hi, I'm Nate. I play Flindla the Halfling Bard, your most prolific salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite place is also Waihi, but towards Bowentown end is Anzac Bay. So I love water. Um, my mum used to call me like a water baby, but I'm very specific about it, so I have to be able to see through it. <laughs> and it needs to be not too choppy. So Anzac Bay is perfect. You can kind of float up to your knees, or you can go right up to your shoulders, and it's like protected, and it's nice. Love that. Beautiful. So uh, everybody ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons? Oh my yeah. god, I'm so ready, I'm so excited. Some offices and paper. <laughs> <laughs> a parchment, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Some parchment and pencils. <laughs> oh, it's a bunch of ones what I said. <laughs> so, after running your various errands, uh, Karen, Ido and Flynn, you guys meet back at Lazy Susan, um, under the Great Oak in the centre of the Circle of Exignia. So, do you remember that white-faced horse when we were, uh, well, that, that was coming out of the bank and it kind of looked like somebody was stealing it during the goose incident. I'm going to be honest with you Karen, they, I was not focusing on horse at that time. Okay. Well, <laughs> is that the one that ran someone over? Yes, I think it might have run oh over. Oh my god. Was that right? <laughs> yeah, is that why you can't remember? You got a concussion? Oh my god. That, oh. Yeah, you, you might have had a head injury <laughs> from that one. Uh, so, 
There's a cat in the inn. I've booked rooms for all of us, by the way, so okay. don't even worry about it. There's a cat in the inn that looks... It has a facial marking that's surprisingly similar to that horse. So, sorry, you're saying there's a cat in the inn yes. that looks like a horse? Yes. Well, this i got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Is it enlarged goose size? No, no, it's just like a little cat and it's black and then it's got a face. And the face is very white and it looks like the horse. And it looks like the owl, but from Karen, last night. Are you okay? Like, I just you think, seem a bit tired. I just think something's going on, darling. Well, like, admittedly, we've been through a lot of shit, so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, yeah. So we should look out for animals with white faces that linger, right? Unnatural I, lingering? I think so. I think that's probably smart. I can get on board with that. There's magical geese, what else is next? Oh. I'd prefer to forget about the magical geese, to be honest. But yes, Flynn, I think that is a rather grand idea. Looking out for animals with a white mark or stain. It looks kind of like an ink blot on the mm. face. I've only seen three, I think. The owl and the cat and the horse and... Anyway, what have you, what have you all been up to? Okay, it, so... Went to the fo you know that forest that people are going into. The forest into. that's all about all around us. Yes, yes, they do one. know of it. Um, <laughs> uh, rude, but you know how <laughs> people are going in and they're not coming out. Oh, I'd have eaten. What? Did you? I'm not killing anyone. No, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> No, but what it was I for all along? <laughs> Twas I. No, but I I went to the edge of the forest, and what I saw was. A, a mark and it said treasure. Oh, what kind of treasure? Well, okay, I don't have specifics here. It was just a, a bit of the old lingo I know. You guys won't understand it if you see it, but it says treasure and that means we should go and find it. You think it might be that box thing? Actually, now that you say it, yeah. But it, it, <laughs> potentially. Oh, you were just you were just going to go looting, were you? Yeah. I like gold. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a great idea. Yes, that makes it even more worthwhile going in. I mean, that means I would go in instead of just looting, in which case I would leave you to it and probably not tell the boss, but you would be on thin ice. Yeah, I think I really am. But um, that's not the point. Uh, Don't go on ice <laughs> at this time of year. Where's, where's Frankie anyway? Um, roll me perception checks, everybody. <laughs> Except for Frankie. Uh, <laughs> For Karen? 13. For Ido? 8. For Flynn? Ido, you're kind of looking in the right direction towards the Artifice Supply Store. In the second story of the Artifice Supply Store, you can see Frankie, like, with his back to the window, holding his hands up. <laughs> looking oh looking like he is surrendering to somebody. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no! And, and then I just go, uh, guys, and I point up there. And Flinton's looking, he's like, Oh, no. that's Frankie, isn't it? <laughs> that is Frankie. Why is he upstairs in someone's house? <sighs> okay, uh... Frankie, inside the apartment that once belonged to Gesdark the Inventor, the current occupant, an elderly gnome by the name of Quisp, has, upon seeing your amulet hanging out of your shirt, accused you of killing their father. What do you do? Panic! <laughs> <laughs> like, who's your father? I, I never killed anyone in my life. Quisp goes to the kitchen and comes back out with a cheese grater. Like obviously just like ran, grabbed the first thing, came back and like points at you and is like, my father was an exceptionally powerful person. If you didn't kill him, how did you get his nothing? Does it look like I would have killed him? Does it look like I have the capability of killing somebody? <laughs> I found it in a storage unit? I don't know if I should be telling you this, but you know, a gang member had it. We liberated it from said gang member. I don't know where he got it. I don't know if me telling you this is gonna put you in danger, but that, that's where I got it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I know what it is. It's fine. And by this point, you've like backed yourself up towards the window and you're holding your hands up. While Frankie is explaining all this, there's like a knock at the door because we're not going to just barge in, but we're like, um, excuse me. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Roll me a persuasion check with advantage because of the distraction. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a 16. All right, boy. 
I believe you, but now I've got a job for you. Oh. I'll pay well. Oh, okay. I mean... <clears throat> Meet me at the entrance to the forest in 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> And then they kind of just like nod to the door like... Frankie jumps out the window. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> we okay, all just uh, turn around. A, a me, story okay, up? Roll me an acrobatics check. <laughs> oh, acrobatics. You can hear from below. Uh, hello? That's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so Frankie... Did bird flail so you got, you, the <laughs> remaining three of you are like... You know, knocking on the door of the artificial supply store, like, hello, is our friend okay? Hello. Um, and then Frankie, like, falls to the ground next to you, just completely, like, front first belly flops onto ooh, the grass, oh no. taking five damage. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. F Frankie, darling, what happened? Frankie, Are you that... okay? Did you get thrown out of the window? I can see a very small person. Very small? Did, she pick, <laughs> did, did they pick you up? Good, no, it's, it's fine. I, fu I fought them off. It, uh, it wasn't easy, but, uh, he brushes himself off. He's got, like, glass sticking out of it. Oh, like, oh, my it's lord. It's fine. Okay, okay. We gotta go back to the forest. That is nasty. <laughs> what, and now? Right what did you learn? I just learned this place is really old. Is it, is it weird that me and Frank are on the very same wavelength right now? Like, we're both like, forest, 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 let's go! Very strange, especially because of all of the injuries. Frankie, please, <laughs> sit down. I can, I can put some crystals on those. We should probably pull that glass out of you. <laughs> You're meant to leave it in it. He actually. likes to pull, oh. he, he pulls one out oh, and then no. like a little like blood. And he's little like, fountain. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. No. We'll just, we'll leave these for now. You gotta oh. plug up the leak with broken glass. <laughs> yes. Just yes. So and you guys, you guys heading back to the entrance to the forest? Uh, Slowly. Yes. I don't notice the way. There's like a small archway. It's, you know, two, two pillars with like one of those sort of flat curved up bits on top that like is kind of the entrance to the forest and there's a pathway that's heading in. I don't think you've already been here. So the rest of you guys would see uh, a sign saying we don't organize search parties anymore. <laughs> I don't think, do you point out the treasure sign or are you keeping that to yourself? I will because I want to show off how cool I am that only I know what this means. So like, see, see, that's what I was talking about. You see what I mean? It looks like a box. Exactly. It looks like graffiti. Yes. Okay, well. How does that mean treasure? You would know if you had studied what I've studied. Well, now I know. I know the ways sign. of the blade. <laughs> anyway, and the graffiti yeah. and that. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on, Frankie, please sit, sit down. I can put a ruby on your wounds, and it'll be all right. Okay. Yeah. That's not the science, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll just sit here and and wait for. I'm just waiting for my mate. Uh, Do you have a. You have a friend? You've made a friend? Oh, yeah. Frankie! Yeah. Oh, good for you! Yeah. Why do you sound so surprised? Frankie's cool. Yeah. I was just a little jealous. Yeah, you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah, um, they're, they're coming soon. You, you guys could go ahead, or you could wait. Karen, you gonna do a heal? Absolutely. Cool, go ahead. Um, roll, roll Karen, heal. yep. Karen is going to pop a ruby. Um, <laughs> she's just gonna, okay. she's gonna hold an electrum in one hand, and with the other hand, she has a ruby. As she pulls out the glass, she's gonna touch it to each of the wounds. And as, let me just <laughs> check how healer works again. One d six plus four. <laughs> and as uh, she touches the ruby to each of his wounds, the electrum glows. It was a you know two story house, but it was a two story gnome house, so yeah. it wasn't quite as far to fall because the <laughs> ceiling is very low. <laughs> so you heal for four HP. All of your wounds close up, except for maybe one, just kind of rakishly across your ch your um, cheekbone. Yeah, just kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frankie, roll me a perception check. That is a 14. As you are sitting waiting for your new, you know, contract employer to show up, uh, you see a bluebird uh, just sitting in the tops of the trees oh and it sings a little bit and it flies into the forest. <laughs> I know that bird. We what? Are, okay. oh. Don't worry about it. Is, is, is that this your the friend? friend? Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's a friend, but not the one I'm waiting for. It's been my dream. Huh? I asked him if I should be naked too, and it told me not to. It's fine. What? Uh, Frankie, I think I should follow that bird, but also maybe... Did it have an ink drop on its face? Like a white so, splot? What? Frankie, all birds look the same. <laughs> what? No, they don't. Do. That, 
It could be literally any bluebird. I don't know. This one talked. We had conversation. I feel like it knows me and I know it. No, no. You had a dream bluebird that talked. Now we're in Ixingmere and there's a bird in the forest. Pretty sure it's the same thing. Yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and just say, you know, Frankie saw some sh stuff. Okay. Well, are we waiting for your friend or are we following this animal? At this moment, you hear a noise <laughs> behind you. Uh, and Frankie, you see Quisp. Uh, the rest of you see like an elderly gnome. Uh, gnomes live about two, 250 years and this one looks like it's getting uh, up there in age. Maybe not, maybe not like 200 plus, but certainly not too much younger than that. Mm. And this is my the, friend. They have a like, you know, a drink bottle and a backpack and a hat <laughs> and they kind of look like they're ready for safari almost. Aww. And they it's look around really at all good. of you with their thumbs underneath the, you know, backpack straps. <laughs> and they say, oh, you've got friends, huh? I'm just wildly doing different accents all the time now. They say, <laughs> oh, you've got friends, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm ready to ask my question. And they cast their eye across all of you. Shrewd gaze landing on either your amulets or the, if they're, your amulets aren't visible, they're mm -hmm. the straps that are holding them around your necks. Mm -hmm. And, uh... You all seem capable enough, so I might actually make it. What do you mean, make it? Who are you? <laughs> oh yes, uh, good day. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Quisp. I own the Artifice Supply Store. Huh. And your friend here is being hired to take me into the forest because I'm ready to ask my question. Wait. Oh. You're freelancing on the job? Okay, well, uh, it's very nice to meet you, Quisp. Uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Karen, Karen Stonecutter. Yes, of, uh, of the Stonecutter family. Quisp walks right past you yes! and straight down, oh. straight oh. down onto the path of the forest and crabbly calls back, Keep up, children! I like her, and Flynn just like starts following. <laughs> and Karen's going to sidle up to Frankie as Frankie walks into the forest and goes, Your new friend seems a little bit rude. Uh, she threatened me with a tree, tree grater, so like, I'd be kind of chill around her, you never know. She might grate your thumbs. Oh, oh no. Um, you hear you hear them call back, that's they, whippersnapper! Oh yes. Uh, oh, we, yeah. we all have weapons, we could easily kill her. I don't, I don't know. Them. 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 Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> so you guys are all hidden in? You guys are going to follow Quisp? Oh yes. yeah. Yep. So you all head in underneath the archway, uh, down the well-worn path into the forest. Early tracking's fairly easy. There's a well-worn path to follow. You, uh, you only have to walk single file as it winds through trees, bushes, vines, a place that city folk like you guys have really only seen in picture books before. <laughs> uh, roll me a perception check, everybody. Picture books. Mm. Oh. 18. 10. Flynn. 10 fighter. That is a 13 for Karen. In all directions, you are surrounded by greenery. You can hear rustling, birds singing, insects buzzing, uh, and high above in the treetops, you can see a long constrictor snake moving from branch to branch. Ooh. Oh. Frankie, you're not sure why, but the snake's path seems to mimic your own. Uh, it follows above you for some time. Maybe it thinks you look tasty. <laughs> I do like snakes. Yeah, you seem like the kind of dude that would like snakes. I do like snakes. Do you? I don't seem like the kind of dude who likes snakes. I'm pretty sure wild snakes don't do that. What? Move? Follow. Do you not see how he's like walking and then we're also walking and kind of... Snakes oh, don't well, walk. Well, they do stalk their prey, so I that mean... might be the answer. <laughs> I'm not feeling particularly comfortable in the woods. Yeah, well, I wasn't until you pointed that out. And actually, Quisp <laughs> is very small, and they are the perfect size for a snake treat. So well, maybe don't say that to me. Don't say that to me and Flynn. <laughs> no, you guys all right? <laughs> Which of you is walking next to Quisp? Are they leaving the way, or is somebody else taking point? I was walking behind them. You notice that Quisp is holding a compass in the palm of their hand. Um, it has a needle inside, and no matter which way they turn, it always points in the same direction. Oh, so it's broken. Right. <laughs> no, like a compass. Oh, no matter which way you that turn, it always points. That could be interpreted in two different ways. Like I thought it was like stuck in one direction on the it's compass. It's broken, it always points north. north. <laughs> Don't be mean. 
<laughs> I'm gonna use a nature check. <laughs> oh, there's not good at orienteering. <laughs> Quisp seems like they're in really good spirits, oh. um, and they turn back to see who's behind them, and then they say to you, "Well, I don't know what this is. But this isn't a regular compass. North is that way." And Wait. points in a different direction than the way that the compass is pointing. Sure, I'll take your word for it. Can I have a look at that compass? Yeah, Quisp kind of like hands it over to uh, you I'll, and I'll says, give it uh, back. Don't worry. My father gave that to me. Said a, a hero of mine gave it to him. For as long as I've had it, it's always pointed this way into the forest. Can I do an investigation check on the compass? Yeah. Can I put down my goggles? Eyes of minute seeing. Oh, those goggles are so cool. So that I get advantage on investigation checks. That is a 23. Very nice. You only see them because you have the goggles on minute seeing on, but around the inside of the compass, so it'll be glass on top, glass on bottom, and then like a metal band around the outside. Along the inside of the metal band, there are really small symbols. There's like a sun, and like what looks like maybe a bit of seaweed. Uh, there's just like a plus symbol. There's like a, just a lot of different, like random simple symbols that go all the way around the inside of the compass. Um, and at the moment, it's pointing at one that looks like uh, a trapezoid with a square on top. That should be like crisp. Did you think maybe instead of it pointing at a direction, it's pointing at these symbols here? The things there on the show. Um, when Ido hears you say symbols, I'm like, oh, symbols? And I grab the compass and have a look at it just to see if I can show off. <laughs> they are so small that with, literally without Frankie's goggles, they just look like scratches. <laughs> it's like Frankie was looking at this close with like basically magnifying glasses on his face. So with your bare eyes, you, you, they just look like scratches to you. I would like to make up something though, to make it seem like I know what I'm talking about. Cool, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, clearly it says we're going towards treasure. I didn't know what those symbols meant, but okay, you know, you seem to know symbols. And then I like delicately put it back into Crisp's hand. Thank you very much. On we go. After you've been walking for about an hour, the path splits into two. One way crosses a rickety rope bridge and leads across the ravine into a lush green jungle. Uh, and the other path goes sharply downhill, basically like down cliffside, uh, into a space where the river at the bottom of the ravine and the forest have merged, a bayou. Mm. Which way would you like to go? Mm. What is the snake still following us? Roll me a perception check. Just while she's doing that. Um, Chris, where's the thing leading, pointing? It's basically pointing in a direction that kind of is in between. Like <laughs> forest oh. is, fo like jungle is right, bayou is left. Uh, it's basically pointing like straight down the middle of both of them. Yeah. So it's hard to, like the compass won't tell you which way to go. Yay. That is an 18 to perception. Ooh. You don't currently see the constrictor snake. Okay. I've lost sight of the snake. Uh, I just want to let you all know that I don't know where the snake is. I, I just gently pat myself down. <laughs> just like, oh, oh, oh. No, that's my toe. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn turns to Ida and he's like, do you, do you see any of those, um, the square circle things? Aha! Okay, roll. Perception if you like. Investigation, up to you. Can Flynn help? Yeah, I'll do investigation. Yeah, you can, you can be, you can do help. So roll advantage. Oh no, no, because Flynn rolled his own roll. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's that's um, the advantage. I guess. So, can I use that one? Uh, no, that would be Flynn's one. Aww. So, like, what are you specifically rolling for? Are you looking for thieves' can't symbols? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What did you roll? I rolled a sixteen. You don't see any fleet thieves' can symbols. Okay. Uh, at the at the pathway, uh, and Flynn, what did you roll for either perception or investigation? I got. I rolled a sixteen, so I got a. 20. For a 20, uh, you can tell just from, you know, the wear and tear of the pathways that previous adventurers have gone both ways. Yeah, it's gonna, that was going to be my next thing, is which way does it look I, like? I don't like the view, I don't like the look of that bridge. Yeah, it gives but me the other way the smells. Yeah. Go through the bayou and swamp and you're yeah. short, you'll be sucked in the oh. mud pit or a snake or a gator will get you. Oh, I, I, I don't like alligators. We can just throw you across where the bridge is if you like. Oh no, you can't toss you can't toss dwarves. We're very hefty. I think the tallest of us should go across first to test it out to make sure it's safe. Probably a good idea. 
And we all look at Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's canon established that Ida first yeah, taller than Frankie. Is. <laughs> Damn it. Ida for, Ida for and I bend down Ida slightly. Ida slumps down and looks at Frankie. <laughs> so you guys are choosing the jungle path? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Flynn kind of like rummages in his bag of holding. I've got a rope if we want to tie each other to ourselves. Like, we'll oh. tie ourselves to Karen if she's the heftiest. I mean, sorry, strongest. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's fine. Dwarves are very bottom heavy. Oh, I see. It's, it's one of our most well-known assets. <laughs> the badonka donk. The badonka donk. Um, <laughs> the junk. Good for carrying all those stones. You know, uh, dwarves are measured in stones. Uh, the more stones, the better. Yeah, absolutely, if we want to tie ourselves to each other. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Quisp, do you want to be involved in this little trail, train? Absolutely, we're, we're going to the box. Please do keep the box, did you say? The box? The box, yes. That's, where do you think we're going? Ah, uh, yes, a box. We'd have nothing to do with a box, do we, friends? Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to hang on. I'm just going to roll inside <laughs> on that. Quisp uh, maybe didn't hear you because they were busy rummaging around in their pack. They rolled very low on inside for that hilarious. very obvious lie. Is that where you're going to ask the question? Of course. Is it called the question box? <laughs> you're a smart one, aren't you? <laughs> Well, I am a manager. <laughs> Frankie just swings out and like, I don't think that was a compliment. Oh, Flynn just starts rummaging around, them, tying I people to each other. I take them where I can, darling. I take them where I can. Look, look, why do you think people go into the forest? I don't want to turn to you. Oh, it, well, it's certainly not for the scenery. I much prefer the city. Karen says, like, overlooking, like, you know, a Jurassic Park, like, you know, bayou <laughs> forest in a canyon and just beautiful lush jungle. She's not... looks like a dinosaur, like, flapping in the <laughs> distance. What the hell is that? She's not an outdoor person. <laughs> she was born in a cave. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, people go into the forest because they want to ask their question. Everybody gets one question, and sometimes they come out and they don't like what they learned. Oh, and then they go back in and then they get lost, and that's why you guys don't send out search parties anymore. I'm not so big on why they go back in, but I certainly know why they go in there in the first place. Maybe they think they can get another question or something. <sighs> Do you know how many questions the box gives? One per person. Oh. I've lived in this town most of my life and I've never really needed an answer before, but now I want to know what happened to my father. Well, oh, that's your question. I was gonna say, just ask me, I'm sure I can help, but no. <laughs> how did my father die? Uh, pff, I don't know, how did he die? How did this awkward, awkward boy get my father's nothing? What's nothing? Uh, yeah, what? He, what? I, didn't, I didn't say nothing. What? Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered. <laughs> Uh, remember how we don't like we can't talk about them oh we can't talk about them uh, and when they're talked about we don't hear it like the nothing oh oh <laughs> do they know what they're saying or is it just filtered out Chris, nothing? um we no, don't no, we can't understand what these things are yeah i've i've heard that how about we just call them pretty necklaces okay they are quite nice can they be cool Cool yeah, I was going to say, cool, cool necklaces. suits me a lot more. Efficient? Frank was just really excited. Efficient for necklaces, necklaces, you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, efficient. 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 We can each call them a different Wait. thing. Do you uh, all you have them? Do no. Do yes. I, yeah. Oh, uh, I... I'm pretty sure I told them when, I, you know, my life was in danger <sighs> in the room. Damn it, Damn it Frankie. Oh, thank you, Frankie. <laughs> was that passive-aggressive? or? <laughs> Quest has got a magic compass. They're kind of already deep in it. Yeah, and it's four against one anyway, so if they what, tried to tell anyone. You wait, you, all four of you have one? Yeah. Yes, they chose yeah. us. Why? Are you going to show them? Yeah, I'll just be like, yeah, yeah why? Someone's got a good feeling about like this. If everybody else is showing one, Karen will pull hers out and say, well, it's not like anybody else was using them. Quisp is like in awe, like looking around at the amulets and kind of points them one at a time and says, Rum, Wilhelm. Umbria, six. Six? I got the dumb one. <laughs> Were those the people who had these before? They were my father's friends. Was oh. six cool? All right, so now we know how your dad, your dad died in a terrible Wilhelm. adventure they got roped into. Oh dear. But yeah, no, we didn't kill them. It was probably the mob. Yeah. I think we're stalling at this bridge. Quisp. Well, I've tied us all together now. Yeah, so we're we all can... tied together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Flynn was just like walking around tying. <laughs> all right, go on, Frankie. Frankie would also just like to 
now that it's safe, I'd like to pull out Hans. And he also has his own cute little rope <gasps> tied to himself. Oh, it's like a little, little cotton, little, oh. Yeah, he's with his little propeller and he's flying. Okay, okay, Hans, lead the way. My lord, you are an artificer, aren't you? Yes, I am. Did you ever think he wasn't? He's like, just like, <laughs> what kind of cool, like, stumbles on like a roof or something, like. Falls down the ravine. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe you're not the best person to go I'm with. fine, Frankie's walking. Okay. Okay, so you guys made up your mind, you're going jungle route. Going jungle route. Okay. So having made up your mind, you each set foot onto the rope bridge to cross the ravine. Uh, the boards are old and broken, the rope is frayed, and the canyon is a long way down. Roll me a constitution check, everybody. Oh, oh dear. God. Oh, I'm Get not ready for meant, poisoning. I'm not, I'm not meant oh, for yeah. being up high. That's a natural 20, baby. Not natural 20. 10. I got a natural 21. You are all crossing, uh, and at one point, Quisp stops and closes their eyes because they rolled a natural one and starts shaking and just seems really, really frightened. Like you watch them look down and then like sharply intake their breath and then... Mm. <laughs> That's the vibe. Meanwhile, we've all like killed numbers of people and we're all like, this is nothing. <laughs> oh, Quisp, Quisp, hold my hand. You don't have to open your eyes. The old gnome uh, reaches out for you like Grabbing, yep. Karen, Karen will grab the shakily, hand. Shakily, yeah. And and you grab their hand, and you're going to like help them across the rest of the way. Yes. Okay. Karen was at the back of the rope, so she'll be helping Quisp along. Like everybody else is walking, and she's kind of walking backwards, helping Quisp. Cool. We do make it uh, across the bridge. <laughs> that's good. Uh, so that's, that's really good. nice. That's a bonus. Having made it across with the whole party, you <laughs> guys take a moment to rest uh, before <sighs> continuing along the path. The Flynn's gonna fold up his. Little rope. But this is a lot harder going. You've now got to bush bash a bit, uh, climb enormous fallen logs, and find the path where it disappears and restarts. Mm. Oh. I turn to the group, I'm like, can we, are we gonna, you know, do the old, and I gesture to my Amy and be like, you're gonna pull out the old weapons to help us out here. Well, they don't want. Uh, well, I think the cat's kind of out of the bag, darling. And yeah, um, Karen's going to summon her great axe to help with. Temperate or regular? Regular. To help with cutting. Anybody else? Yeah, Flynn will as well. Uh, Quisp seems both frightened and delighted uh, to see <laughs> this this happen. I presume you've seen this before, maybe, or possibly not. Quisp kind of just grunts. Uh, <laughs> uh, doesn't really like. Kind of has gone a bit quiet since the bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just sort of you know joining the party. Kind of doesn't really seem to want to talk very much. <laughs> the jungle itself is teeming with all kinds of life. If you thought the forest before you was loud, here it's almost dizzying. You can hear the hoots of monkeys above, birds flit near you singing and praying on the small insects that you've disturbed. The plants are absolutely wild. There are huge fanned leaves bigger than Karen's whole body. Uh, every tree is covered in moss and parasitic vines. There are flowers of every color, and at one point you think you spot a tree with fruit that Flynn could easily climb inside. <laughs> He's not gonna know. Compared to the city environment that you're used to, this place makes you feel small and completely alien. Karen's got one hand on her tote bag slung over her shoulder and the other hand is holding her great axe one-handed and she's yeah. kind of going, oh, as she chops through the, <laughs> through the leaves. <laughs> is that to scare off animals, Karen? Clear uh, the I, I'm, uh, this is all rather new to me. Uh. And she chops down another... Keep in mind that Karen's like dressed for a funeral right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you still wearing your heels or are you taking them off or...? I mean, she was probably saving her big funeral gown for the funeral. So she's wearing like traveling wear, okay. which would have been sensible um, black walking shoes. But it is all black and it is very hot. It's extremely hot. <laughs> Flynn's going to offer Quisp a jelly candy and be like, you did well on the bridge. Would you like this uh, jelly candy? It's from my good friend... Uh, Cassie, who uh, shared it with me, but I'm I'm happy to share it with you if you need it. That is an absolutely enormous candy. Will you split that with me? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, cool. Yes, you tear it in half and, and offer it to Quisp. The, the Goliath candy, like yeah, the <laughs> enormous Goliath candy. <laughs> with Flynn, have you got any more of those? Oh no, but you can have some of mine. It breaks up a little bit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a little bit of sugar in them, uh, Quisp does seem a little bit more peppy. Uh, then after they they cross the bridge. Uh, it's 
Is where's that snake? Ah, uh, we'll be fine. It was only just a bit big. Oh, it was really big. It was bigger than I was. If it makes you feel any better, you can see all kinds of animals in every direction now. Oh, it doesn't, <laughs> darling. It really doesn't make me feel better. Question, are any of us canonically scared of anything? Like spiders, snakes, like, is that part of our, any of our characters? Karen just doesn't really like the wild. Gotcha. She's a city girl, so... It's a bit icky. It's a bit icky. Yeah. I'm she can she can deal with like giant rats because that's what the city offers, <laughs> and cockroaches. Are yeah, and geese, geese, whatever, you know. But anything that's kind of wild and weird, she's not a big fan of. All right, so we, okay, sweet as. <laughs> so it's just a teenage girl we're looking after. Yeah, basically. <laughs> she's also scanning for white-faced animals in the jungle. Okay, uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, that's 10. You don't see any. <laughs> You've seen that blue bird again. Or any bird. Frankie turns, he's like collecting moss samples off a tree. <laughs> that bird. What bird? The bird. Oh, oh, the bird. The, the, the bird, the blue bird. Dream the, bird, Frankie, dream bird. The word, oh, yeah, yeah. The dream bird, um, that, it, what definitely wasn't a dream bird, but it was a real bird. Frankie, look, can I roll perception for Frankie? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that is a 15. Yeah, the bluebird that you saw, you saw like two hours ago, and you just saw it for like a moment as it like flitted into the forest. Uh, you've not seen it again since then. But like, this is a jungle, so there are lots of birds. There are fantails, and there are <laughs> um, like, you know, tropical parrots and stuff kind of around. But no, you don't see that specific no, bird anymore. No, there's, there's too many birds around. This bird probably <laughs> doesn't like other birds. Do we see any dead people? Because like, travelers that have been in and that died here because this seems very dangerous you don't see any dead people at least not yet there's no there's no yeah, rotten no, skeletons or anything like that mm. um you've not yet seen any any you know people who haven't made oh, it oh okay. that's nice <laughs> all right likely because they've been dragged off by tigers or whatever yeah, I was thinking, I was yeah like, what, but what, you know what ate them delicious <laughs> all right well i'm getting a bit tired guys it's like oh should <gasps> we break should we break for afternoon tea yeah, uh, anyone bring food? Because admittedly, I did overlook that. Well, yes, of course. I've always got a little bit of sandwiches, and uh, I believe I've got a, a, a oh, uh, well, the thermos. No, it was only really for the for the carriage ride, and it's Frankie, kind of gone cold. There? Frankie has his lunch. Oh no. Oh. From what week? Frankie doesn't keep track of time. <laughs> I am not prepared to deal with Frankie, like, projectile throwing up. Oh. Uh. So you guys, you know, you've been traveling for a few hours at this point. Mm. Um, you find yourselves in a small, clear it's not really like a forest clearing, like, you know, grass and stuff, but mm. like, you find yourselves in a space where the trees are far enough apart that you can sort of stop and have a little, uh, little bite to eat. Mm. Karen's got a cold, some cold tea in the thermos. <gasps> no. um, unfortunately, because she, she packed it for the carriage ride and forgot about it. Um, but she does also have some um, sandwiches, slightly wilted lettuce, um, <laughs> lettuce and cucumber sandwiches oh, um, with crust cut off. Just wondering, no one here has uh, create or destroy water, do they? No. No. That's all right. Quisp does, however, um, see that you have cold tea mm. and one of the things that they have is like a collapsible kettle uh, and so they uh, you know kind of like pull on it and bring it out and then they go watch this watch this this is one of mine and they take <laughs> like a small piece of like chopped firewood uh, and then they take a like a small metallic uh, sort of spike with a bit on top and they push it into the spike uh, and they put it on the ground and the wood splits into five pieces that fall on the ground <gasps> and the center of it catches on fire. That is uh, so cool. It has like a little portable portable bonfire with them. I oh. nudge Frankie like, eh, eh, you see that? Oh, very nice. Yes, um, well, if, if everyone would like to wait, uh, Five or so minutes, we can all have nice hot tea. Yes, I love tea. Oh, tea. Can someone do a nature check to um, see if there's any fruit or anything? That, uh, yeah, you edible? can do a survival check. Oh, yeah. oh unnatural tree. Yeah, you find a mango tree not very far away. Ooh, so I'm gonna gather some of those to bring over. Does anybody want my, you know, egg and salmon sandwiches? Uh, oh, that's gonna be a no from me, Frankie. Uh, you know, you I've, shouldn't. I've discovered why maybe the snake was following you earlier. I'm gonna like. 
I'll accidentally be like, oh no, and then oh, bat it out of your hand because I, I don't want you eating that. Oh, oh, oh it's in the dirt. Oh no. I got oh, some no, mangoes. And I stamp on it. Oh, you mango, Frankie. <laughs> mango. The the sandwich uh, for the second time this this podcast. Frankie's sandwich is flung into the into some you know <laughs> nearby shrubbery, uh, and you hear some rustling and oh. some grunting, oh. uh, and then some whining uh, from from over there. Oh uh, no! Roll me survival checks, everybody. Yeah. Survival. Oh. Natural um, twenty. Nineteen. Thirteen. God, someone's gonna think you guys are cheating with these rolls, eh? <laughs> I've had pretty, pretty lame rolls roll so far until this. Fourteen. Not today, I got seven. <laughs> Frankie and Idafa, you guys kind of like look over, you know, look over into this log uh, nearby that you heard the snuffling, uh, and you kind of like get down and have a look inside the log, uh, <laughs> and you, you find in, inside the log two small balls of fur hiding and crying and chattering <gasps> their little beaks, uh, barely blinking with their enormous eyes. There are two owlbear cubs uh, oh! in, inside of oh. this. <laughs> <laughs> there are two owlbear cubs huddling inside of this tree. Oh my God. Guys, I, Frankie's head's I'm, like right in there. Yeah, I'm like, put one out, Frankie, put one out. Le uh, leave, did, what, what, leave it. <laughs> what is they're, it? They're too far in. For you to reach with your arms, they're like really far inside. What about with hands? What if we wait, wait, Karen, Karen, give me some of your sandwich. N no, uh, what, what is it in there? I don't know, but it's cute. Well, it's wild, so don't touch it. Yeah, but like cats it's are like wild before you domesticate them. It's like touching a rat in your mere city. You don't know what's on it. But this one's way cuter than a rat. What's so cute about it? It's, it's oh, like look at it, and I pull Flynn to the log so he can see it. Or I look down and see their babies and I'm like, there's gonna be a mama around here. Oh, the, it's, like, it's a nest? Away. Oh wait, you don't know that. Uh, 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 Quisp, and look at how small and cute they are, there's no way the mum can be that oh, scary. Mm, Quisp, I think we'd better move on. I, uh, what, why? These, these two have found some babies in a log and I don't want to be here when the mother returns. Look, if anything, we should be and saving I'm, I'm, them. I'm chucking hands and I'm like, From get what? the baby's hands. <gasps> Quisp kind of like takes a look in as you're doing that and kind of like looks around and kind of weird and like, owl bears are like, I'm going to Murphy's voice now. God, what's wrong with me? <laughs> owl bears are feral predators. These, this is not normal for them to, anybody here talk to animals? Oh, I mean, I guess I could give it a go. I, I talk to my cat all the time. I talk to the bird all the time. Um, so I just want to ask about rituals. Yeah. Because I can, but A, Karen's never tried before, and B, I don't really know how ritual's going to work in the setting. Okay. So is it, a, do I spend an electrum, or do I just hold the electrum, or what happens with those? So I noticed the last time you cast Speak With Animals, you just did it instantly, because it was when we were up against the Hellhounds. Oh God, yes, yeah, I forgot so about that. Yeah, so we forgot that it was a ritual, and that's fine. So how about if you want to to cast it as a ritual if you want to take the 10 minutes mm. you can wield an electrum and not consume it or you can cast it as a spell and consume an electrum and, and get it instantly an okay. and that will cover us for the last side where we casted it uh, as, as, a, a spell. as a spell okay frankie how much hp does hans have oh, no. not a lot <laughs> oh no um, i think it is only like i don't have it but i'm pretty sure it's like my artificial level like it's like so five, five. Yeah. Okay. five HP like him. cool one, yeah. as Hans gets closer uh one of the albert cubs like bites at it <laughs> so what's Hans's uh what's Hans's hands what's Hans's uh, AC he not wearing armor eh <laughs> so um <laughs> well, 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 well you figure this one out um Karen says okay um I think I've done something like this before let me try something and she's going to sit down and she's going to hold an electrum because she doesn't have a lot left and she's trying to kind of think about talking to an animal like she did with the hellhound but doing it in a way that the electrum isn't consumed like these guys can sometimes do with a spell and she hasn't quite figured out how they do that mm. so she's trying to consciously not spend an electrum while still casting a spell okay so you, yeah, you're casting a ritual, you're so, casting yes. Speak With Animals as a ritual. I'm casting Speak With Animals as a ritual. So it will take 10 minutes for it to work. 10 minutes? Yep. <laughs> We've got to eat our mangoes anyway. Well, you guys, yeah, you guys, were having, you guys were having a cup of tea anyway. Uh, Quisp is, uh, you know, Quisp is watching the kettle mm. uh, during this time and manages to pour everybody a cup of tea. 
Frankie, you can you can just not. We'll just go story. You can find your stat block later. Okay. Um, you manage to fish Hans out of the of the <laughs> log, and it's got a big beak beak bite mark in it. And uh, speak to me. Speak to me. Does he even speak? Like, come on. He, he beeps and boops. I can understand. He beeps and boops. He beeps and boops. That's so cute. Um, oh, can I use mage hand? You want to use mage hand for what? To like take out one of the. You can only lift five pounds. With, oh, it says uh, ten pounds. No, I'm pretty sure Mage Hand mm. is five pounds, um, and they are quite bulkier. They're still, they're like small bears, so they're quite still like quite dog big. Like dog-sized. Yeah. Okay. okay, Karen has been, while you guys have been eating mangoes and drinking her tea, Karen has been thinking about spells, and she's going to raise the Electrum up to her mouth and speak through it, and she's going to say, uh, hello, hello, my dears. Are you quite all right? Do you need some help? Uh, at this, what you guys hear is like a weird hooting, growling noise coming from Karen. Uh, and at this, the, both of the cubs kind of like bird-like twist their heads over towards you and you can see their shiny eyes. And one of them says, run from here. Big tooth are near. Mama is hunting, so we must hide. Big, big, to big tooth, big tooth. Just one? Boom. Boom? Oh, God. Okay. Um, Boom. And this is, they're saying that? No, you can hear it. This is, this is happening in the background. Karen? Um. Boom. The owlbear said to run. They said Big Tooth was Boom. near. Mother was get into the undergrowth now. There's a, there's a harsh <laughs> rustling uh, as some of the trees overhead part. Uh, and you find yourselves looking face to face at a broad scaly snout, vicious eyes and dozens of large sharp teeth. The Tyrannosaurus Rex draws itself to a full height and roars, causing birds in all directions to fly out of the trees and into the sky for safety. From the undergrowth, several smaller dinosaurs emerge, uh, awaiting the scraps that the apex predator is sure to leave. Four small feathered raptors chittering to themselves. The Rex takes a step forwards and opens its mouth, releasing a torrent of drool and rancid smells. It thinks you're all dinner. I think I'm joking when you said those dinosaurs. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love dinosaurs. Roll for initiative. Kia ora, Penny here. Welcome to a nice little mid-adventure break, and a special hello to all our new fans who have recently joined the adventure. It's really great to have you on board. We recently released all four of our NPC designs, Janice and Rufford's Jr., Mr. Marvelous, Murphy, and Master Spec. If you've been following the show and you're interested in seeing how Liv Artisan has designed these characters, why not check out our social media? There's new ones to come next month, so keep your eyes peeled. Maybe your favorite NPC will pop up in the new batch. Music credits. Thanks to Delicate Steve for sailing, God Mode for Whole Tone Limbo, Slow Sneak Up, Traversing and Melancholia, Dan Hennig for Empire Seasons, Chell for Lazy Wheel, DJ Williams for First Class, Ramzoid for Mexico, Self Chol for Raging Streets, Anno Domini Beats for Arms Dealer, Vans in Japan for Desert Brawl, Audio Hertz for Luck Witch, and as always, thank you to Regan McKinnon for our show's theme song. You can interact with us at facebook.com slash Janice and Breffitt's podcast, and we also have a Twitter at JBPC Podcast, where we post show updates and other cool stuff that we get up to. We also shout out a lot of the other New Zealand podcasting community. We love hearing from fans, so please feel free to leave us a message or tag us. I'm going to start a push for reviews soon, as we're just about to hit episode 20. I'm currently thinking of fun ways that we can reward people who leave us a review. If you have any requests, why not drop me a line? You can listen to the show at janisonbreffords.podbean.com, as well as on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podchaser, Pod Addict, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 20, The Question Box Part 4, should be out in two weeks, Sunday 2nd of May. Some stuff's about to drop, so make sure you don't miss the next one. Right, on with the show. I've discovered why there's no bodies on the path. <laughs> also, the mage hand is um, 10 pounds. It now. is 10 pounds. Yeah. Okay, I think that's still too heavy for a, oh. a baby owlbear. 10 pound ain't much.
It's, yeah, it's 4.5 kilograms. Do owls eat mangoes? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got more important things to worry about. Yeah, you like an actual that. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, this is cool. I can't believe we've just started playing Jurassic Park. Is this sharp tooth <laughs> like the one before time? Where's Jeff Goldblum? In my heart with the nice shirt. God, right? Did anybody get higher than 15? Oh dear. Oh no. Did anybody get higher than 10? 14. Karen got 13. Flynn got 9. And Ida got six. Oh, yikes. Ooh. So there's our dumb rolls in the niche. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'll just roll one for Quisp as well. Oh, yeah, Quispy. Oh, God, how are they going to Quispy? How are they going to Quispy? A 200 year old gnome. How are they going to go? Just <laughs> stab their fire thing on them. Hey. And it turns it into a bundle of sticks. It's Create Bonfire. Oh. They are an artificer as well, so they've got the similar thing. That so could that be stabbed into something? Uh, you, it, it can. It can do damage. Yeah, it currently is. Probably not much though. Create bonfire can do damage. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Okay. So it is the five of you versus five dinosaurs. Oh my god. Uh, one of which is quite big. Mm. The other one's a little bit smaller. We are ready for a bit of initiative. Tyrannosaurus Rex. How big is that actually? It's the biggest thing we've ever fought, right? Yeah, so, so it is classified as a huge creature, which is, so you guys are medium creatures. Yes. The next sort of size up from you is large, so it's like two creature sizes taller than you guys. So I'll tell you what, uh, just for fun, I will Google how tall is a T-Rex 5E. <laughs> just, just for fun. Just for fun. About 20 feet. Yikes. Dear God. The Four answer is about 20 feet tall. So, all right, here we go. First combat. Uh, the first thing that happens is one of the Velociraptors is going to run forwards and attempt to grapple Ido. It's always me. So she's going <laughs> to run up and attempt to like bite you on the ankles. What's your AC? Uh, 14. No, unfortunately doesn't doesn't manage to do so. You manage to pull your foot out of the way. Oh. Uh, next up <laughs> is the T-Rex. Oh no. Oh god. It is going to do a multi-attack, so one bite and one tail attack. It can't make both attacks against the same target, uh, so it's going to try and do a tail attack against Karen. Mm. Let me see. What is your AC, Karen? My AC is 13. Uh, yeah, that hits. Oof. Uh, so it is going to do 3d8 plus 7 damage to you. Oh my oh god. god. Yeah, we need to get some armor or something. I'm a barbarian, I can't. You guys, like, don't complain to me. You guys literally killed a no, mummy yeah. before it had a chance. Before it had a chance to do anything. So. After this, though, I might get some cool looking. 21 damage. 21 oh my damage. God. All right. Uh, and it's going to do a bite against Flynn. <gasps> me? Yeah. What is your AC? 16. Yeah, it did not, it did not hit. Oh. Uh, which is lucky because it's a big, it's a big attack. Oh, that big chomper. Yeah, that's a big mouth. <laughs> T-Rex steps in, I'm tiny. goes to do like, you know, sweep his tail and catch his Karen, uh, and then goes to bite, like, you know, brings its jaws down on Flynn, attempts to bite him, but Flynn like just drops to the floor and because he's so <laughs> little, it like eats the grass above you and comes up and you're just sitting there like a train's just gone over you. <laughs> nice and flat. Uh, next up, Frankie. Uh, Frankie is going to summon hot wire and take a shooty shooty Ooh. with hot wire at the big boy. At the T-Rex? Yeah. Cool. Go ahead and roll me an attack roll. Do you get one or two attacks? Uh, one. Cool. Okay, go ahead and roll me an attack roll. That is a 15. Cool, that is a hit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, hot wire is the crossbow that like has a wire attached to its bolts and you can uh, zap people with electricity. Are you going to use your bonus action to do that? Yes. Cool, go <laughs> ahead. Cool, so go ahead and roll your damage. Ooh, that's also a six. Uh, so that's seven in total. Yeah. Six of that is the lightning damage. Okay. And then because it's a six, uh, the target is pushed back 10 feet. Awesome. Okay. Uh, also, you didn't add your dexterity modifier uh, to your that's damage. That's right. No, I didn't. Plus five. 7 plus 5 is... 12. 12, yeah. Yes. Cool, okay, so I'll yep. take that down. Uh, and it's also pushed back 10 feet. Yes. Cool, okay, so uh, Frankie steps up and uh, points their crossbow at the T-Rex and lets a uh, bolt fly. And you all can see that there's a small metal string, a metal thread that connects back to it. Uh, the, the bolt does connect with the T-Rex. Doesn't seem 
particularly bothered about it, but then you shoot a bunch of electricity <laughs> through the wire, and because you rolled max damage, the T-Rex actually stumbles back uh, and is pretty pissed about that. <laughs> Karen. Okay, did she get knocked prone or did she just stumble? No, she just stumbled. She didn't, she didn't get knocked Okay, prone. cool. So Karen is furious that she got hit and you could kind of see her boiling with rage <laughs> and the electrum that she was holding in her hand for talking to the owlbear um, suddenly vanishes and her eyes flash blue and um, she would like to attack recklessly please, which is advantage. Yep. Um, now with the great axe, not the temperate one. And uh, Karen screams what she thinks is in common but what actually is in a dinosaur roar. Get some, you bastard! Oh my gosh. Okay, that's an 18 plus 8 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Yep, okay, so that's 1d12 plus 5 damage. Did Karen just roar? Uh, roar means I love five, you. Five, six, seven. Seven. That's, eight. that's 8 damage on my first attack, and then oh. my second attack, I'll do that again. <laughs> that is a 15 plus 8. For, that hits. Yep, and then another 1d12 plus 5. Ooh, that is 10 damage, and they're both slashing damage, and she's just going to hack away at the tail. Okay, yeah, so the T-Rex... Uh, it takes a bit of electricity damage and then this tiny like thing that it thought was prey runs up and starts hacking away its tail. <laughs> um, the second attack actually does like lop the like, <gasps> last foot of the tail off. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Swapping it. And swapping. the T-Rex is not happy about that. Uh, next up is the second raptor oh. uh, who is going to run up and uh, attempt to do another attack against Ido, and it has an ability called Pack Tactics, where it has advantage on attack rolls against the creature if at least one of its allies is within five feet of the creature. Mm. So when they're ganging up, they're quite dangerous. Uh, so it's going to come up and it's going to do um, a multi attack against you, Ido. So it is going to do uh, one bite and one claw attack. So what's your AC? 14. <laughs> First one hits. Yikes. Second one's a crit. Ooh. Oh my god. Uh, so that is going to be 1d6 plus 2 for the bites. That's four, uh, 4 bite damage and the next one is 1d4 plus 2 but it's 2d4 because of the crit. Uh, that is an extra 6 slashing damage. So 12, uh, 10. Yeah, so okay, 10, 10. 10 damage total. Oh, I have a question. Yes. When, can, when do we use our like reactions? So you can use your reaction when something says you can use a reaction. Like for example, now that you've taken damage, <laughs> yeah, you can, can I use, use your reaction. Yeah, can I use Hellish Rebuke? Yes, yes you can. Awesome. I thought it was only... Oh, no, so reactions can be taken at any time, assuming that the... Like, so for example, an attack of opportunity is a reaction. And you can do that when the... Basically like when the thing is fulfilled. Yeah, like I need to take damage to do this one. Yeah, yeah. or if, if you have the sentinel feet, someone has to try and go, move past you and then that's a reaction. Blah, blah, blah. So right. your reactions are taken pretty much just not during your okay, turn. Right, yeah. Okay, nice. So they need to make a dexterity saving throw. Cool, okay. Both, uh, how many targets are you allowed to hit? Is just one, one creature? Point your finger at the, uh, the one creature that damaged me. Uh, okay, dexterity saving throw is 9 plus 2. Yeah, so uh, 11. No. Yeah! Good. <laughs> so, you're, what, so what happens? Your eyes light up and you shoot it with green fire? Yes. From where? From, it's going to be my hands, like straight up Kamehameha kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is, because that would be second level spell. And remember, you don't need Electrum to do this, because it is an innate feature of being a T-Player. It's part of who I am. It's because you still have <laughs> eyes that you can do this. <laughs> Thank uh, the good lord. lord. That you still have eyes. So that is 2d10 fire damage. Cool, go ahead. 14 fire nice. damage. Nice. The, 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 the velociraptor that just bit and clawed you has been burnt to a crisp by green fire. Uh, the first one's dead. Flynn thinks it smells kind of nice. Oh, it's probably delicious. Just like the, the you know, the, the guy on the Transformers movie that just was... You know what, never mind, it's fine. We, we just watched <laughs> Sorry, the, Steve. one of the bad Transformers movies on New Year's Eve and it was One really of them? Bad. Yeah, the one with the dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know. One of the Transformers movie. movies has the Dinobots in it and I'll, I'll, we can complain about that later, but okay. this, isn't a, this isn't a Transformers <laughs> criticism oh, podcast. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So I kill one? 
It did? You did, you just killed one. Yeah. Good, all right. Flynn, you're up. Cool. Um, so I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Bardic Inspiration. Okay, cool. Who's closest to me? You can choose. Uh, Karen Crow will be the furthest away from you because she's on the other side of the Oh, you're near the tail. Yeah, yeah I'm near the tail and you're and near the head. And I was near the head. Oh, it tried to bite you, eh? Yeah. So, okay, I'll, I'll choose you. So I kind of like, Flynn waves his hands, like, <laughs> kind of like, whoa, at you, um, oh like waving around. And he's like, those things, morning breath, are disgusting. They're almost as bad as you, Idafa. But I think you can take them down. Let's make them all crisp rats. <laughs> you like, inspired I don't think I'm very inspired by that. <laughs> Don't resist the inspiration. Did Flimthart just neg you? <laughs> yes. I'm gonna, a single tear will go down my face. Uh, and what are you gonna do with your action play? Um, and then I'm gonna cast um, Minor Illusion to make two of me. Are you less than five feet tall? Oh yeah. Because there are like other spells that are specifically for like creating illusionary doubles and I don't know if you can do that with Minor Illusion. Instead of um, making Illusion myself, can I please make an illusion of a fireball um, in the sky that looks like a meteor coming down. Oh Ooh, my god. That's too soon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. But the image can't create sound, light, smell, or any other sensory effect. That's okay, you can't hear meteors. Oh god. Wait, I mean, that's not scientifically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear meteors. I mean... Okay, yeah, so you've, you'll have to draw their attention to it. <laughs> okay. Maybe and just use your You're basically your you're messing with perspective, right? Like you're trying to make it look it's very close, but you're trying to make it look like it's super far away. Mm. Yeah, like okay. a meteor's coming at them to yeah. make them extinct. Okay, so Flynn has made a, uh, a meteor in the sky. Uh, <laughs> Idafa, you're up. <laughs> Do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think um, I kind of want to try some like sneaky stuff because I'm a rogue and I never do it. Okay. So um, I've killed this thing and I'm assuming that the Tyrannosaurus is still kind of, it's focused on Karen? Probably. Uh, so Karen is near a tail. The last thing that it did was it tried to bite Flynn and then Frankie shot it. Okay. Because Karen also lopped off the end of its tail. I'm talking like this much of it, like, a, yeah. like less than a foot of its tail. About, about about a Subway sandwich worth of Tyrannosaurus tail. Delicious. I, yeah, I wouldn't say, like, I, I wouldn't get stealth. Just remember that if you try and move out of the um, range of the other Velociraptor that's on you currently, it will get an attack opportunity. Oh, there is another you. one, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, so one's dead. There'll be three left. Are they all quite close to me? One is close to you. The other two are still in the bush line. Okay. So we basically need to use pack tactics to help out Idafo. So somebody else needs I'm to get... Uh, yeah, so somebody else needs to get close to what Idafo wants to attack so that he can do sneak attack. At the moment, Karen, you, you fit that bill. Yeah, I'm, that I'm, close to to, the I'm close to the T-Rex if you want to attack the T-Rex. Um, so you could throw your dagger at the T-Rex and that will qualify for sneak attack. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess so. But it's not mm. going to be a very good... I think I'd rather get rid of these things around me first. Mm. Cool, go ahead. I'm feeling pretty sick after doing that hellish rebuke. I might just try a firebolt at the one that's closest to me, like that's going to come at me next. Okay, roll an attack roll. Mm. You've got my uh, inspiration dice, you yeah, can I choose to... Yeah, I do I just added d6, right? Yeah. It's 10. Unfortunately, a 10 does not <laughs> hit. The Velociraptor is able to dodge out of the way. Done. All right, well, in that case, I just feel like an idiot. Well, remember, you, you also have your rogue level 2 ability that lets you uh, dash, dodge, or disengage on a bonus action. So to disengage, you can actually, like, disengage is like being able to move away from something without get the, without getting an opportunity of. attack. That That is it, right? That's the three things that you can do on a bonus yeah. action. So you can disengage from the raptor and then run away towards where you want to position <laughs> yourself. Okay, but then, like... No, one of them is hide. One of them is hide. Yeah, disengage was a swashbuckler thing, I think. Okay, yeah? so it's it's dash, dodge, or hide? Dash, no, dash, disengage, or hide. Oh, okay. Oh, because there's no such thing as dodge. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, there is such thing as dodge. Dip, dodge, dash, dive, and dodge. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, I guess I'll disengage, but to get to the T-Rex, would I... Like, would the other Velociraptors have a chance to attack me? No, they're not no? next to you at the moment. Okay, sweet. Then, in that case, I'm going to be like, whoops! disengage however that looks i guess it's just me going like, Hoo -hoo, and then jumping out of the way um, <laughs> and then you run towards the t-rex <laughs> i'm gonna run like between its legs have i got enough is it 
How far away is it? It's not very far from you at all. It's probably 10, it's probably 15 feet away from you. Frankie pushed it back a little, so. Oh, sweet ass. Yeah, I'm going to run between its legs. Okay. And take cover. You're going to take cover underneath of it? Yes. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Next up is Raptor 3, uh, who is going to run up to Frankie and attempt to... Um, Reaction. Panic button. Yes. You're using the panic button? Yes, I am. Okay, can you please read me the panic button? Okay, panic button. A small metal box featuring one bright red button. Ooh. Five charges, once per combat, for each initiative rolled. You could use your reaction to push the panic button, casting the shield spell on yourself. Nice. Cool, and the shield spell increases your AC by five. Is that what that yeah. does? Nice. Ooh. Excellent. So cool, so uh, Frankie pushes the panic Good button panic. and the Velociraptor is going to attempt to grapple you, which is going to be a lot harder now. Uh, <laughs> it rolled a natural 20. Oh! <gasps> so, uh... How can I grapple them? I've got tiny arms. Uh, so, but it's grappling you with its mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and now that it's grappled you, it is going to... I'm really sorry, Frankie. And uh, now that it's grappled you, it is going to... What's the word for like a takedown? Like it, it, there's something that you can do when you grapple someone that makes them prone. A takedown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a takedown. <laughs> sounds a lot like a takedown. Wrestle, tackle, straight up murder. Uh, I was so excited to use the panic button. <gasps> that was good. That, that was pretty saved cool. you from, um... It just it just slipped under. It Unfortunately, just... there's not much that I can do about it now. Uh... Um, in the future, you can use that after I roll, so like you know whether or not it's a good idea. Oh, um, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Okay, uh, I, I realize you were excited to use it. It's probably the wrong timing. Very excited. It made my armor class 19. That is amazing. That's pretty good. How long does it last for? Uh, I think until like my next turn. Like oh. it's. Okay, well that's like good. If you get attacked again, probably it'll do something. Yeah, so the, unfortunately the raptor's going to um, drag you to the ground using its grapple, uh, which means that now that you're prone, any uh, melee attacks against you have advantage. Uh, no. um, Frankie's very tall. Next up is Quisp. Ooh, what's Quisp Come on, do? Quisp. Quisp is going to uh, pick up uh, a small rock uh, from near where they're standing and is going to uh, lug it into like a similar sort of arm strap that what Frankie has and is going to cast the catapult spell using their artificer invention. Cool. cool. So catapult is a level one spell, essentially just lets you shoot debris at people. <laughs> so it says choose an object weighing one to five pounds within range, it isn't even normal carry, so it's just a rock from the ground. The object flies in a straight line up to 90 feet in the direction you choose. Uh, if the object would strike a creature, that creature must make a dexterity saving throw. So the Tyrannosaurus Rex is going to make a dexterity saving throw. It did not pass. On a failed save, the object strikes the target and stops moving. It does 3d8 bludgeoning damage, which is pretty good for a level 1 spell. Wow, cool. Oh, damn. Oh. Um, so Quisp, you know, picks up a rock, uh, says, Look out of the way, whippersnappers! And then, like, shoots the rock at the T-Rex, uh, doing 15 bludgeoning damage. Nice. Wow. Which is a pretty good spell that I've really never used before, so that was quite cool. Okay, and then Quest was going to use the remainder of their movement to, like, back up into the bushes. <laughs> not, not taking the hide, but, like, getting out of the way. The remaining raptor, Raptor 4, is going to run up to Frankie and... Uh, do pack tactics multi attack. <gasps> so two attacks, one bite, one claw. So he gets advantage on both of them, but you do have an AC of 19. So yes. first one hits. <laughs> Second one misses. Oh, thank God. So the bite does hit 1d6 plus two. That is seven piercing damage to you. Okay, uh, back to the top of the round. Uh, the first raptor. <laughs> that was near Idafa is now going to join in on uh, Pack Tactic Sing Frankie. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So again, multi-attack. I am going to roll with advantage. Uh, first one misses. Second one hits. So this time you take Ooh. a claw attack, which is 1d4 plus 2. Ooh. There's five more, five more slashing damage. <laughs> Next up is the T-Rex. Mm. Finally get to beat you guys at something. <laughs> uh, next up is the T-Rex. The T-Rex is going to... Basically it only has one thing, it just multi-attacks. Mm. So it does one, one bite and one slash, so it's going to turn around and try and bite Karen this time. Sure. Sure. 
sure I'll take the bullet. 9 plus 10, 19. Does 19 hit? 19 hits. So this is 4d12 plus 7. Okay, and that'll be halved because I'm raging. Yeah. Oh, bad rolls, T-Rex. 1, 3, 6, 8 plus 7. Good. 15, halved. 7. Oof. And so if the target is a medium or smaller creature, which you are, yes. it's grappled. The escape is DC 17. Until the grapple ends, the target is restrained and the Tyrannosaurus can't bite another target. So you are currently in the T-Rex's mouth. Oh no, do I need to make a strength or a dex? On your so? turn to escape, you can do a, a strength DC 17 roll. <laughs> okay. And next up, it's going to do a tail attack uh, against Flynn. <coughs> With what the of it. Uh, 13 plus 10, just 23 hit. Yes. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Thank you for asking, but yeah. Uh, so it's 3d8 plus 7, 11 plus 7, so 18, 18 bludgeoning damage as you get hit by the tail. Jeez Louise. You still alive, mate? Yeah. You still conscious, I should say? I am indeed. Uh, next up is... Just a bit tender. Let's go on Frankie. <laughs> I guess I'm going to... The first thing you need to do is you need to escape the grapple. Yeah, so just roll yeah. me a quick strength uh, strength attack. Not hard. Strength to attack? Sorry, roll me a quick strength uh, th strength check. That's a 17. Yeah, easy. Yeah. So you've broken the grapple um, and you can use half of your movement to stand up. Yep. Stand up. <laughs> and... You are surrounded by tiny feathered dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which on any other day would be really cool. Yep. I am... I can't really do much unless I move away and just get that attack of opportunity but so you're gonna take three opportunity attacks i i think so i think it's better than being surrounded so do you can we just quickly check if shield ends on the start of your turn on the end of your turn the, uh, until the start of your next turn cool so shield is now out <laughs> it's gone the velociraptors get to make three yeah. bite attacks with advantage <laughs> oh that's awful yolo first one hits second one misses Third one hits. So you take two more bites, which is uh, 2d6 plus 4. 10. 10 more, 10 more damage as you as you take those bites, but now you are out of their reach. Are you heading towards the tree line or are you heading towards the wreck? I'm heading towards probably the tree line because okay. I want to climb a tree and get the fuck okay. out of here. <laughs> so you, you make it to the tree line, it's about 10 feet from where you were standing. Yeah. Just hide there for now. I jumped in the shrub. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, Karen, you're up. Okay, I'm um, currently in a dinosaur's mouth. All right, so I need to make a strength check. DC 17. DC 17. I make it an advantage because I'm still raging. Karen is like screaming, but she's not screaming in pain. She's very angry mm -hmm. because her shirt, her very nice um, funeral traveling shirt and her very nice funeral traveling <laughs> pants are getting ripped. That's a natural 20! Yes, you do. So you, <laughs> using just your strength of your rage, just push up and push the dinosaur's mouth open oh as God. the dinosaur probably looks confused for the first time in its oh. life. Um, would you like to jump down? God, it's so it's so good that I'm just standing there in its mouth. Stab it. I can't if you want to roll like acrobatics action. or something, you can try and climb on top of its head. Yes. Cool, roll me an acrobatics check, but if you fail, you will fall to the ground and take damage. Mm, okay. Can it be athletics? Yeah, yes. that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> okay, you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, look, my DM styles, I like to say yes. That's my thing. Because um, Karen, Karen, Karen's, Karen's very athletic. But not very dexterous. But not, um, not that much, because that's a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I'll, I'll meet you halfway. You, you're out of its mouth. Mm. You're like standing on one of its face ridges and you are looking like your face is like right where its eye is. Oh, she's like on, on its snout holding on. Yeah. <laughs> Not really on top of its head, but like sort of you grabbed on. Around. And you're literally like your face is the same size as its whole eye mm. and you're just looking at it right in the mm. eye. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, Raptor 2 has been incinerated. So Flynn, your turn. Bite its eye. How's Karen. that meteor working out for you, bud? <laughs> It has done I don't nothing. Know. <laughs> what is it done? Well, um, hoping for the best. So how many raptors are there now? There's three. Three. Oh. And they're all standing very close to each other where Frankie was a minute ago. Oh, so they're not... A, uh, how close are, are my buddies? So Karen is on the side of the T-Rex's head. <laughs> uh, Idafa is standing like between its feet. Uh, and Frankie has dived into a bush. Okay. Where's Quisp? Quisp is in a similar bush really near Frankie. <laughs> They're sharing a bush. Yeah. 
The artifice of bush, we'll call it. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to cast fireball on the raptors. So like in the mid- between the middle of the grouping. Okay. Which has a 20 foot radius as well. That's where you guys were. Okay. okay. No, cool. that's fantastic. Uh, so you can set it up so that you will hit these two in the T-Rex or like, cause it's 20 foot radius. Um, I just said that the bushes were 10 feet from where the raptors were. Mm. So either it's gonna hit the T-Rex and these two, or it's gonna hit uh, Quisp, Frankie, and, uh, and like, but either way it'll hit all the raptors, but just kind of like where you put the edges. Put it on me, baby. Yeah, I was gonna say, I could probably take a hit. Yeah. yeah I'll go Are you resistant to fire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're raging, eh? Yeah, I'll go for the T-Rex in these two. Cool, okay. Because they I'm don't look like, as squishy yeah. as the tiny old lady. I'll feel really bad yeah. about that. <laughs> you very likely Let's would kill Let's kill the gender quest. neutral yeah. gnome. <laughs> so Flynn kind of like, he looks around and he's like, <laughs> not the old lady. <laughs> so you're going to take old the remaining lady. bead from your necklace of fireballs? I've got, I've got two left. No, you had two. I'm pretty sure it started with two beads. No, it had four. Definitely didn't have four. That sounds like a lot. Okay, well, okay. I'm gonna That's use the balls. last ball then. I'll tell you right now, I'm editing the episode that you got it in and it was two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Someone wrote three, didn't they? <laughs> I did indeed. Okay, so I used the last ball. Yeah, and you I- You might want to back up first. Yeah, get out of that radius. Yeah, boy. <laughs> okay, and then I, yeah, I move. Would that put me in the bushes? It will put you, yeah, either on the bush line or in the bushes if you okay. want to be. Yes, I would like to be out of the way of the big. Okay, cool. You are, you are now out of the radius of fireball. <laughs> cool. And I kind of like take a knee, so I'm like under a bit of branches, and then I <sighs> use my last bead. All right, all three raptors, Karen, Idafa, and the T Rex, make a dexterity saving throw. All right. Now, what can is the I? DC? Now, would you? Would you? Would I? I would argue that I could see this. Uh, spell save DC is fifteen. Oh, you're looking at Donna's eyes. No, because I just said that your vision yeah. is taken up by no, the T-Rex eyes right. happening behind you. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so I don't gain advantage on my deck save. But that's okay, but that's fine because I rolled an 18. Nice. So sorry, this is Dexterity. 15. 15 is the DC? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're rolling a Dexterity saving throw. So I think our rogues get proficiency in saving throws for mm. Dexterity. Yes, um, still a shocking <laughs> roll. I got a nine in total. Okay. Is my Running? What did you use that? He used it. Okay, okay. Uh, the T-Rex got a... Can't imagine them to be the most The, de- the T-Rex fails, um, and all three raptors pass. So the T-Rex failed, the T-Rex got 14, <laughs> and all three of the velociraptors passed. Uh, uh, but go ahead and roll your uh, damage, because they still take half damage, so okay. you might still get them. So that's 8d6. Okay. Plus my... Um... Oh, that's a lot of ones. Can I reroll ones? No. No, of course you can't. <laughs> it is attack. It is attack. Oh no, saving attack. No, it's it's uh, it's, yeah. uh ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Yeah, it's when you roll a d20. He has made sure to learn that. <laughs> Twenty-three damage. Twenty-three damage. Okay. Forgot you insta kill all the velociraptors. Oh yeah. So they are immediately uh, incinerated. The T Rex takes the full amount of damage, which you see was twenty-three. Flynn yells out, "Barbecue!" Because <laughs> like, you passed and you are resistant to the mm. damage, you take a quarter, which is 23 half is 11, and then half again is 5. 5 damage. Sorry! And you have you just have resistance, right? Yeah. So, so you're 11. Like yeah. How are you looking? Um, I'm okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Nice move, Flynn. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. How's the T-Rex? Is it stumbling? It took a big hit from that fireball, um, but it is still standing and it's still... T-Rexing. T-Rexing. Okay. Idafa, you're up next. So I would like to uh, take out my rapier and I kind of just want to go straight up and then like <laughs> run forward so it goes through its tummy. Okay, cool. <laughs> Idafa uses, you've got purple, right? Yeah. So Idafa uses his amulet to summon like a beautiful like what, black, purple, uh, long, straight, thin sword with like a super nice handle, <laughs> but it looks dark because you're edgy. Yeah, pummeled up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and go ahead and roll me an attack roll with the commands back up. Because I'm right under it. Can we do it with advantage? Actually, so you can have advantage because Karen's engaged with it. Yep, so. ah. this is a sneak attack. This is a sneak attack, yes, you are <gasps> Congratulations correct. Because it's marriage. not looking at you, it's looking at me because I'm in front of its brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's at least 18. You can just bite its eye. Yeah, cool, that hits. And then damage with that is 1d8. So your sneak attack damage at this point should be... How many d6s? You, what level are you? Fifth level? Five. So it's, yeah, three d6s. Yeah. 
Oh, and I rolled a one with my, this, so I get another D6. Can I grab someone else's D6, please? Oh, I've got one. Thank you. <laughs> me. All right, so in total that is 6, 11, 13. Idafa goes ahead and just does like a slash along its belly. Oh, cool. and it kind of sticks it a bit weird. And then it kind of just writes itself. Uh, go, good on you for procking the uh, procking the ability like the first time you use the sword. Well yeah, done. hell yeah. And so what, how much damage did you do it? 16. 16 damage. Um, do a nice slice up the T-Rex belly. Oh. Uh, and he definitely felt that. <laughs> <laughs> My tummy been squashed. Uh, okay, next up, so all the raptors are dead. Uh, next up is Quisp. Quisp is going to uh, throw, like, reach into their bag, uh, pull out a little grenade-like thing, push the button on it, and throw it. Um, and it is a sparkle bomb. So uh, basically, it's going to attract the T-Rex's attention. So that the next attack on it is going to be uh, uh, with advantage. Ooh, fairy fire. Yeah, but it's like a mini fairy fire. Yeah, it's just a that's bomb. I love that. That's such a good idea. And then Nick, thank you for complimenting me. Always, <laughs> always love that shit. Um, next up hot, is hot tip, the guys. T-Rex. Always compliment your DM. Mm-hmm. And the way you do stuff. Uh, the T Rex is next. Oh my god, and Penny, you look so pretty today. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and you have advantage. <laughs> no, next up is the T Rex. Uh, what can it see? It can see Karen, but it can't bite it. it can't ah. bite a Karen. It's going to try and bite Idafa, I think, because you sense. are within its reach. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and roll a melee attack. 13 plus 10, I'm pretty sure is going to hit, right? Yeah. So this is a pretty big hit. This is 4d12. So. Oh, my what? Lord. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to have to do some This is 4d12 recon. plus 7 recon? piercing damage. <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of my health, okay? <laughs> yeah. Wow. For 27 piercing damage. Yeah. And you're now in the T-Rex's mouth. I'm just having a little sleep. <laughs> are you unconscious? Yes, definitely yes. Okay, you are definitely in danger of dying, so <gasps> hopefully people are going to do something about that. That's all right, you've got a, a you've advantage. Got a, you've, got a, you've got a one-shot killer. You've got a one-shot killer, so I can heal him. Yeah, but maybe don't use electricity, because that would affect me too, right? And also me. And that, yes. And Karen, it's going to do the tail attack against you, but if it misses, it's going to hit itself. How does that, <laughs> sound? How does that, that sound, sound for a deal? That sounds pretty fucking funny. Uh, 17 plus 10. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 3, 8 plus 7. I get half of that. Yeah, 1, 2, 3. Thank the good lord. 14 plus 7, 21. Okay, and that's halved? Yeah. Okay, so that's 7? Yeah. Okay. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, out of about 47, Karen is a feel- feeling around about 7. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so specific. It's so specific. Okay. Frankie, you're up. Okay. One shot, one's kill, baby. One shot, one kill, baby. I, I don't have those kind of spells sure. or abilities. Okay, that's fine. But I do have a plan. Okay. I want to know if this is possible. Okay. Actually, I already know it's not. Never mind. <laughs> oh. It's got a gaping. Well, no, it's not. Yeah, gaping. it's, it's got a tummy slit. Out. Has oh, got a tummy okay. slit. The T Rex is real damaged at this point. Oh, I was going to do that. Well, okay, okay so I, I think I'll just do a uh, flaming spear. Ooh. Ooh, spicy. Just <laughs> so that I could cast it and then also ram it. So it's oh, effectively. Can you, I've never heard the spell, so can you read it to me? Yeah. A five foot diameter sphere of fire appears in an unoccupied space of your choice within range, which is 60 feet, and lasts for the duration, which is one minute. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dexterity saving throw. Creature takes 2d6 fire damage on a failed or half on a successful. As a bonus action, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. If you ram it into a creature, that creature must make the saving throw against the sphere's damage. And then it stops moving. All right, put that sphere up its butthole. Oh my god. Or into its tummy hole. <laughs> well, probably up its tummy hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I was going to do. Probably yeah. up the tummy hole, no. to be fair, not up the Cool, go ahead. Um, so you're going to do, you're going to put it like up into the wound that yeah. I have for me? Yeah, so my flaming sphere is on uh, like a fishing pole. So he's going to oh, yeah. cast it cool. into its gaping hole of in its stomach. Okay. Thanks, Nate. I'll go ahead <laughs> and give you, so what's the damage on this? 2d6. I'll go ahead and take an extra d6 uh, for hitting it internally as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, just flicking it right up. Do, do I get advantage on that? Oh, is this a roll to hit? I thought this would be a saving throw. 
awkward it is a saving oh. throw never okay. mind <laughs> so uh, sure you can have advantage <laughs> it rolled a 12. my dc is 15. cool so nice. go ahead yep, Very that's nice. a hit. yes that's full damage Ooh. so 11. Cool. So you now have a flaming ball of flame inside of the uh, T-Rex's underbelly wound. Oh. Definitely singeing away at all those good, good ribs. Um, Yum. Actually, it's more of a more of a pelvis singe, this one. Oh, God. Uh, okay, so that was Frankie's turn. Karen, you're up. Karen reels back her hand and uses Ring of the Ram to punch it right in the eye. Nice. <sighs> yeah, okay. Roll, roll me an attack roll. And she's attacking recklessly, so that is at advantage. 12 plus 5. Yeah, that hits. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so 2d12 damage and then plus 2 because I'm raging. And it's knocked back and feet equal to the dice roll. <laughs> I feel like in this situation, if I would just explode. Sorry, there is a, a thing on that where if it's like a large or Oh yeah, huge. half distance. So it is huge, which is one size over large. Okay, so that's half of the dice roll. Okay, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage. So Karen like pulls back, does like, we you know you've got little arms and mm. does like as big of a hit as she could do ah. right in the eye. Oh. So how much damage does it take? 16 damage. 16 damage. <sighs> Mm hmm Just a question. Have we considered the idea that perhaps when you use Ring of the Ram, it does a me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I quite like that. Retcon. Karen pulls back, punches forward. Meh. <laughs> Hits it right in the eye. Uh, the T-Rex, uh, T-Rex's head moves very abruptly eight feet. Because mm. um, you didn't punch it from the ground, you punched it from its own head. Yes. So I'm going to say you fall onto the grass, and I'm also just going to roll to see if it can hold onto Idafa, which it cannot do. So Idafa's <gasps> lifeless body uh, will go... dead? You're unconscious. My sleepy body. <laughs> Oh, yes. his sleepy body tumbles into I the grass. Uh, tumbles into the grass. Fantastic. Is it still like alive, or did, did I just kind of punch it away from me and make it drop out of uh, No, you half blinded it, uh, and it is still alive. Fantastic. Um, okay. And it's real mad. Yeah, it's got like fire in its literally fire in its belly. That's half, fine. Half blinded, missing an inch of missing a foot off its tail, like okay. Subway sandwich <laughs> length of tail. <laughs> okay, so um, as Karen lands. Um, I will use my movement to get over to Idafa. Yeah. Kind of stand over him guarding. Yeah. And I'll use my bonus action to summon the Temperance Great Axe. Flynn Bar is next. <laughs> Me! I'm going to be brave and I'm going to run to the underside of the um, T Rex and I'm going to stab it with my um, green short sword into its belly. It's okay. a very hot belly slit. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead and roll me an attack roll. Are you using your regular sword or the laughing blade? No, the regular sword. Okay, cool. A ten. No, okay, that's not that's not a hit. Oh, yeah, do you have a bonus action it. that you want to use? I would. Healing word, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I've got cure wounds touch, but not as a bonus. Uh, you're not you're not close enough to touch yeah. now. And now, if you move out from underneath the T-Rex, you'll provoke an opportunity. Yeah, attack. I'm gonna use my bonus action to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like he's gonna duck and tuck his knees in and be as small as possible in the pool. Uh, Artifa, it's your turn. I need you to roll me a death save, bud. All right. Ten. Is that in or out? Ten's a pass. Needs to be. Oh, thank gosh. One, one success. Uh, next up is Quisp. Uh, Quisp is going to like next to you, Frankie. Quisp like gonna. You got this. You got this. And then they look at you and say, like, don't come back. You can have the compass. And then Quisp is going to run across. Uh, run across the grass, like cr attracting attention from the T-Rex, uh, and it's going to pull out a little syringe, stab it into Idafa, and you spare the dying, uh, which is going to stabilize you, which means that you are now back to uh, 1 HP. Uh, there you go, use the spare the dying cantrip on you, uh, and is like kind of freaking out a bit because it's like kind of looking up at the T-Rex, which is like right there. I like Quisp. The next thing that happens is you guys hear an almighty roar coming from uh, the bushes. Oh, yay! I thought you should come back. Uh, the next thing that happens is a huge brown ball of fur uh, with an owl beak and owl eyes like charges out of the bushes and is going to attack the T Rex. Oh, phew. It's just like in the King Kong movie. <laughs> Gotta protect them babies. We've all been adopted. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's our mama now. Uh, it's gonna do one beak attack and one claw attack. 
uh, one of those hits, and a big attack hit, which is 1d10 plus 5. That is 6 damage. <laughs> yeah, she tried, you know. And then it's going to just kind of like stand there doing like a weird like hoot hiss at the at the T-Rex. <laughs> Wouldn't get too close to it if it was you guys, it's still a wild animal. Would Karen understand what this Albia is saying? Yeah. Oh, how, how, like, how long does, um... Oh, actually, I don't last? know. It's ten minutes, isn't it? I ten minutes, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, it, as it ran in, it went, get away from my cubs! <laughs> and then did, like, a slash that missed, and then did, like, a bite on it, mm. and <laughs> now I stand there being like, don't worry, kids, I've got you! Oh, completely ignoring all of that. Yeah. Yep. You guys no, aren't, that's, you guys that aren't good. threats to it. No, have you seen her? Have you seen them? Like, <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Uh, next up is the Rex. Really? Yeah. Because we killed all the Rexes. That's a good yeah, we, but I don't we'll, think it, it will need yeah. to do yeah. a, dex saving, a dexterity saving throw. Um, the Rex is going to do a... What have we got? The Rex is going to try and bite Flynn. I'm under it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, down, that's buddy. exactly where Idaho was when it bit him. Oh. <laughs> uh, 12 plus 10, 22. Yep. 4d 12 plus 7. 4d 12 plus 7. A squishy. 31. <laughs> are you unconscious? No, I have three hit points left. Ooh, you are currently in the T-Rex's mouth. Uh, and it's, yeah. gonna do a, it's gonna do a tail attack on Karen. Okay. Yeah, no, I only rolled it, I only rolled a two. Woo! So, it does a tail attack on you and you're able to deflect it. Well, I mean, because I cut off the edge of its tail. Oh yeah, there you go, yeah. Yeah, it, it thinks it's hitting me but it, it just thinks his tail is one subway sandwich longer than it actually is wish, wishes straight past karen yeah dexterity saving throw because the sphere is oh, on its turn? Oh, oh yeah nine yeah so that's <laughs> good you want extra d6 oh yeah that's right that's a five five damage five, five, five damage. damage it's like five. at that point the t-rex is going to roar um, and as it roars, Flynn is going to fall out of its mouth uh, and it is going to uh, run. Um, you guys have got it down to the 17 HP, so it is going to uh, realize that it is beat and it is going to run off into the bushes, uh, roaring, and you can hear it going, unfair, OP, unfair. <laughs> <laughs> is it Albert going to run after it? OP. Oh, babies um, are here. Yeah, but she could kill it. She could. Well, it's running past her. Opportunity attack. No, it's running the other way. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys kind of like all fall back, and you're freaked out, and you're very hurt, and you're very tired. Flynn just splayed on the grass, barely the, the alive. Uh -huh. um, and you, like the owlbear, probably could kill you if it had a mind to, but it kind of goes over to the tree trunk and coaxes its children out <laughs> and walks off. And you can hear the children talking to each other about like, you know, Big Tooth's not that. Big Tooth's not all that. Mum can beat it. Next time we'll, you know, next time we'll be there. It's sounding very oddly like Tuffle and Truffle. <laughs> Karen's going to drag, I presume Flynn is like just prone on the ground. He, she's just going to drag him over, lay him down next to Idafa. And she's going to put a um, clear quartz crystal on each of you, which is the best healing stone, mm. and also an electrum on each of you. And she's going to kind of force uh. force the electrum through the quartz. And as it dissipates, you both feel 1d6 plus 4 better. Do we roll our own? No. No. I roll. <laughs> I roll. Okay, so Idafo is black and Finbar is blue. So you got 10. And... You got seven. Ooh, cool. Flynn got seven. I will um, also like to add cure wounds to that. Mm. So both of us. Or? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just above it there. So I'm going to use my only other uh, second level spell slot for this. Can I offer one of my green electrums to you to help out for me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll use my own. Oh. You using green or are you using? I'll use green. Okay. Both of them. Yeah, because you got to cast it twice. Yeah. Only one yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. I'll give you one of mine. Oh yeah. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Who's gonna use? use. This? <laughs> oh, thank you. Sorry, I And it's an eye. <laughs> after Karen does that, she's going to step back and rustle around in her tote bag, pull out a potion, um, uncork it with her teeth, and glug it down. It's a healing potion. Okay. Nice. Cool. Must add that to you. Uh, if you remember using green electrum overclocks your spell so what is the maximum oh. you can currently cast at do it at second level so it's actually fourth level so add two extra oh dice my. to each of those okay four 
each? It'll be four D at each if you're casting okay. it at fourth okay. level. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. That's a lot of maths. Uh, 14, 18 plus 8. Uh, 26. 26. Thank you. Plus 4. 30. 30. So you, you can just you can just give them the same healing. Yes, please. <laughs> there you go. So both of you get healed for 30. And Frankie, you have two points of exhaustion, which means that you have disadvantage oh, on no. uh, ability checks and also your speed is halved. Oh, <gasps> oh, sorry, Frankie. You, so God. Frankie like puts all of his life into into like oh. healing you guys. And I want everyone's like lying on the ground, like panting, and I want all of you to roll perception checks, please. Oh no. Uh, disadvantage. Oh. Karen is lying on her back, um, eyes closed after drinking the potion, and she got a natural one. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. So her eyes are closed. Uh, Flynn got a 13. Yeah. 18. Yeah. 16. Ido, uh, you're kind of lying there, and f a flash of like kind of gold spun off her affliction momentarily like blinds you. Ooh. And you cover your eyes in annoyance before you look off towards the direction that the light shines from. Because this shouldn't be your reflection all the way out here. Mm. Not like that. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, who was that? Frankie? The, Frankie's just dead like. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, the tree. Did anyone else see that? No. See, no, no. see what, darling? I'm not really in the mood for getting up right now. I'm going to like hobble to my feet and just go a little bit. So does it say it came over from a certain direction? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to walk over there and just... Not even 100 feet from where you were fighting. You can kind of see it through the area that was cleared by the T-Rex. You see it. Uh, built from beige brick lined with veins of gold. Uh, it stands tall amongst its environment, amongst the jungle. Uh, a lot cleaner and a lot less worn than you would have expected for how old a temple like this looks. It kind of looks like a trapezoid with a little square uh, on top of mm. it. Uh, ooh. So we find a temple in the jungle. Karen um, huffs loudly and she says, Oh, Quisp, I hope your question is worth it. <laughs> Quisp helps you up and uh, kind of smiles a little bit, like a little bit shaken by what just happened. <laughs> but kind of feels proud that they were able to help as well. Did a little bit of damage, stopped Ida from dying, and just kind of smiles at you and says, "It's only one way to find out." Flynn goes over and thanks Frankie. Thanks for having my back. That's I feel much better now. <laughs> Do you guys want to go to the temple? Yes. You guys finally make it to the top of the temple, about 50 stairs. When you when you walk in, it's just it's just a, like a you know. A, box with a box on it really mm. kind of drag yourselves into the the room of the temple and you hear a sweet melodic voice ring out from the depths <laughs> i've just swept that floor can you please remove your shoes Hello, whippersnapper. Quisp here. You can't go past a good bonfire, especially one that's so easy to install. Come to my store and buy one yourself. What do you mean this isn't an advertising slot? I'm not thanking anyone, don't be daft. <laughs>